Hello, welcome to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. I'm your host, Alex. Today is Friday, January 21st, 2021. Coming at you with a fresh episode. And uh, you know what? I just want to put it out there because lately it feels like lately it's been the plan the plan has been with every episode and every season that the podcast continues to continue escalating it in content the quality the value that it puts out why because i mean if you don't have valuable content if you don't have content that's worth listening to and that's worthwhile of somebody's time whether or not they're listening to it at one time the speed, one and a half times the speed. I mean, who knows how folks keep up with double speed, but hey, more power to you. If it isn't worth the listen, then folks just ain't gonna listen. You won't have an audience. And the goal is to be able to captivate an audience, tell them a story and relate to them what life in corporate is like because we're all living through it. Every single one of us are living through it. Some of us are just able to recognize it for what it is. Some of them, some of them, some of us, like myself, have been able to piece apart what is reality, what is actual, and what is manufactured. What is actual and what is artificial reality. Because, hey, we're all born into this corporate world, and some of us grow up to be corporate cowboys. Some of us become corporate cowboys. It might be by calling. It might be by title. It might be official or unofficial. Shit, if, if you're an associate of mine, you might well be a corporate cowboy. That's the only reason why I would choose, why anyone would choose to associate with another, is if they've got some virtue of being a corporate cowboy, understanding their position in life, their level in life, and the role that they take up in life. The role that they fill in relation to other people's lives. That's why I got associates. Things that I can't do, something that I have to outsource and I know someone else does better, who do you think I'm gonna push it to? Who do you think I'm gonna provide work for? Who do you think I'm going to help eat? I mean, shit, if I'm eating, my associates are eating. You know, my team, my team pieces up every project. Corporate cowboys gotta eat. Gotta be handy with the steel and earn your keep, if you know what I mean. But this episode isn't about just that. This episode isn't about adults. I mean, it's got adult themes and a lot of it will be graphic, but this episode in particular goes out to the parents, goes out to the prospective parents, goes out to those uh, individuals in corporate who might have a baby project that they might, you know, call the brainchild, some kind of pet project that they're developing And if they pull themselves out to be the creator, to be the mother or the father of some project, and that project could be human. Ultimately, those who know how to uh, cope with life and how to plan around its intricacies and its unpredictability, shit, they treat everything like a project. You just have to be really good at improvising and have to be really resourceful, really creative. And some of those people make the best parents. Do not neglect your duties. In corporate, I mean, they say that officers or managers or, you know, owners got duties, fiduciary duties, duties of loyalty, duties of care, duties of good faith, good dealing, all that good fucking, all that good corporate minutia. 
that you have to be careful not to cross the line. Matter of fact, you have to be careful to cross your T's and dot your I's. You gotta mind your P's and your Q's on and off the clock. And I get it. Parenthood is a thankless job, right? Right? Well, so is just being alive. No one's gonna fucking thank you for just existing. Nobody gives a shit about your fucking identity. Nobody gives a shit about what's in your name, what's in your age. They could give a fuck about how you identify in terms of sex, gender, religion, orientation, race. What matters is your capability, your abilities as a person. What matters is how you develop professionally, how you develop other people's teams professionally, whether or not you're dependable, they can count on you, come to you, approach you with problems. If they know you can take care of issues, if they know you know how to handle business, they will hand you business. And when that comes to kids, when that comes to children, children come with all kinds of problems. Your offspring, your kids will come to you with all kinds of problems. They are, after all, your associates. They shouldn't be running your life. They are not your managers. They are not your your kings and your queens. Sure, you want to live for them. You want to create a good future, but you also must instill in them the kind of culture that will reproduce itself, that will recreate itself, where you are able to see the product of your upbringing, and not even your parental upbringing, but you're able to see the product of your work through their work. And that's it, that, that's what you wanna see. You don't wanna see a, a, a one-to-one copy of like, oh, this motherfucker's like his father, or this motherfucker's like his mother. This motherfucker's a, 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 a daddy's girl, or a mommy's boy. Nah, nah. That's probably the last thing you want. Why? Because that might not be as fruitful as you like it. And in corporate, it doesn't matter who raised you. What matters is how you operate. What matters is the programming, the the software you carry with you then. The hardware, the, the superficial shit on the outside, what you look like, how you dress, what your name is. Obviously, you don't want to stand out too hard, right? The best way to stand out is by what you do, is by the reputation that you carry, is by the work that you put out there, by the work and the dirt that you put in. Shit, that's how you climb ranks in any organization. And for the longest time, for the longest time, even before... uh, what are they? Even before pronouns were fucking problematic, even before pronouns became problematic, entering and, and entering corporate and rubbing elbows with some, I mean, some fat cats, pronouns were always gender neutral. Nobody gave a fucking shit. I would always they, them, their, other people, under other individuals. Now, I'm not saying that's how you have to bring up your kids, but... It's a modicum of respect that isn't, that is not imparted on the general population. I mean, sometimes I think that the general population is kept in the shadows, like they're pushed into uh, ignorance, into generational stupidity. Sometimes I think that, and uh, that really aligns with the theory of social development, of societal development, and how countries are developed, how they're colonized and built, essentially. Like, who's doing the social construction of a society? But, you know, that's a fucking, that's a tangent, that's tangential. Don't have to open that can of worms just yet. 
But when it comes to your kids, don't neglect their development at all. Why? Because their development is your opportunity to grow with them, to be more productive, to be more creative, to be more professional. Obviously, that goes hand in hand with personal, with being a person, being human, coping and addressing and confronting, overcoming the human condition. Because business is always personal. I, again, like it, it, it baffles me. It baffles me. It befuddles me. It doesn't befuddle me. It fucking baffles me. It's baffling. How folks can say, oh, this shit's just business. It's nothing personal. This shit is always personal. If somebody from your team gets clipped for money, you ain't going to go out there and, and put a little work in? doesn't even have to be called retaliation. But it is retribution. And it will be handled personally. You just got to come back. You just got to come back. Don't, <laughs> don't lose your kids to corporate. How about that? How about that? If you let your kids, if you leave your family for whatever reason, doesn't matter if you're a mother, you're a father, right? And you're absent, you're a fucking deadbeat, or you abandon them thinking that they're better off in somebody else's hands, fam, you got, fam, you have too much trust in humanity, especially when half, I'm going to say half, because if we're working with averages, the average is going to be about half. The median is gonna be about half, depending on what it is you're measuring. The median and the average aren't gonna be too far from one another. So as far as intelligence goes, as far as consciousness goes, if we're talking about the average, fam, you're flipping a coin. You're rolling the dice on somebody raising your kids to be prey to corporate. And that, and that is if you believe corporate is just some inanimate entity, which they aren't. Corporate is moving, baby. Corporate is predatory by nature. And not in the sense that it's victimizing, but corporate is active. Corporate is assertive. So if you bounce out of your kid's life, you're going to have my associates in your kid's life, my associates. And sure, hey, I'll do, the, I'll do the best that I can to keep them in line, right? Even if it comes to uh, internal regulation, I'll do what I can. But if I'm not present, shit, I can't guarantee anything. I make no guarantees. We've already established life in itself is uncertain. There is no such thing as security. People are free to do whatever they please, whatever makes them happy, right? Now, if that happiness happens to infringe on somebody else's liberty, on, on somebody else's right to develop themselves, on somebody else's right to grow themselves in a, in a sustainable manner, right? If they're stepping on on your kid's toes, on your kid's right to life, let's call it, then I'll regulate it if I have to. Why? Because regulation feels good, right? Regulation feels good. If I gotta, if I gotta remove evil, I get a sense of satisfaction from that. I mean, that's how I find pleasure in life. That's what makes me happy. So be happy, be happy. I'm, you could call one of the good guys. I'm one of the good guys for now. That may not always last. They may not last forever. And I've, and I've explained this to my associates. Admit, there may come a point where I'm old enough, where I'm old enough to be senile and just asking, asking to get put out of my misery, right? Like I'm, I'm, like I'm crying for help. 
desperately crying for help and just not expressing it, not, not verbalizing it, not vocalizing it. And there may come a time where I have to be put out my misery. I may have to be retired early. But not now. Not as long as I can defend myself in a logical, tactful, and sound manner. I gotta be calm, cool, collected. But if I'm not setting the example for those that come after me, for those that might fill my shoes, i.e. my children, my pet projects, if I can't be the brainchild for a legacy that comes after me, whether or not they got my name, whether or not they got my blood, whether or not we share the same upbringing, the same background, because, hey, if there's, if there's one constant in life, it's change. If there's one constant in life, it's diversity. Everybody is different. And in that way, you could say we're the same. But if I'm not there setting a good example, who? Who, if not me? Who? You never leave the game. You never leave the game. The work is never over. The work has always just begun. The motto is one down, always one more to go. And this game is entry level forever. Don't fucking forget it. So if you abandon your kids, yo, if you abandon your kids, you might as well quit while you're ahead. While you think you're ahead. Because you already failed. That's something you have to live with. That's something you will have to make amends with. And if you can't, (laughs) there's a piece of you out of there. There's a piece of you out of there. It's crying for help. There's a piece of you out there that needs help. And it'll come back to you. Oh, it'll, it'll come back to you. A blessing in the skies, we'll call it. And they aren't always good. So share this. Share this with your friends. Share this with your family. Anybody you know in your life who's a parent, a mother or a father, a single mother, single father, right? Share this with them. They... They might feel personally attacked, right? Maybe they're not doing enough in this corporate life, in this corporate world. Maybe they're not doing enough to keep up. I get, I get that there is disparity out there, right? People don't all have equal access to resources, but the opportunity is equal. The opportunity is equal to be better. Just be better. You don't have to be better than anybody else. Just be better every day. And it's hard. It's hard to dig yourself out of a fucking hole. I get it. I've been there. It's possible. But it's hard as fuck. So if you feel personally tagged like, yo, this nigga Alex all up on my case. Don't stress it then don't worry about what I'm saying. (laughs) If you feel some type of way about it, ignore it, right? Ignore it. Continue with what you're doing. Continue with what you're doing, bro. Ultimately, this message ain't for you, right? If you ain't gonna take it up, this message ain't for you. Like I said, I got people out there. Shit, I'm out here, and I represent corporate. I'm a corporate fucking cowboy. So... If you raise spoiled little brats, right, they're going to get taken advantage of because that's what corporate does. That's who corporate targets. That's who we market to. That's who we piece apart from the population. That's who we segment. That's the demographic we're after, baby. We're sharks up in this bitch and life is a kiddie pool. And it's your kids, man. It's your kids that we're after. And it ain't on some other 
weirdo nefarious shit having them all like the color pink right because the color pink could fucking run out it ain't all it ain't all to get them to like the rainbow or to want to wear cut off sleeves and fishnets and shit nah 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 i mean there's a market for everything and corporate runs the fucking world so we are in everything at the end of the day what we want is your kid's soul sometimes for better and sometimes for worse so you better you better know who you're fucking with who you keep in your immediate circle who your associates are and recognize understand the dynamic of corporate and recognize that that is family your own family you are all associates and you must be working to better one another in every interaction at every moment otherwise <laughs> yeah, otherwise your network your quote unquote your chain of command is only as strong as the motherfuckers you abandon and you leave out the motherfuckers you don't develop the motherfuckers you neglect and that's where we come in baby that's our way in that's our way in to your fucking empire everybody wants to act like a fucking king or a queen not all royalty did righteous things to hold on to their empire fam that's what you have to understand that's what you have to understand and i've been saying it almost every single episode good people do bad things all the time bad people will do worse i mean and i've seen bad people do some good things right right and i've seen good people do some good things a lot of it is expected and a lot of it is not that's life that unpredictable part that's life that's where we are in that's where you are at that's where you should be working <laughs> that's some corporate cowboy shit man if you haven't visited the instagram page motherfucker we're shadow banned we don't give a fuck <laughs> give us a like give us a follow share it i mean it's gonna be posted and up there's like I don't know how many posts, right? And every little picture has like a motivational quote. The caption has something worthwhile in it too. If you haven't visited it by now, you're late to the party, fam. The war has already been going on. This shit is cold now, right? But it won't be too long until it goes hot, until it becomes legal, until it becomes official, until corporate, quote unquote, capital C corporate becomes a household name and corporate cowboys become the heroes and the villains we don't want to be celebrities we just want to be known we just want to have that reputation on some corporate cowboy shit you know you can still subscribe to the patreon keep it running I mean, this operation is going to be non for profit until the casket drops, until we're dead and gone. Even if I'm gone, <laughs> yo, I'm not the last of my kind. If anything, I'm the first of my kind. I'm the first and expect many, many more. And it ain't to get ahead and to say I'm better, I'm the best. Nah, nah, I will gladly, gladly be the first. I'll be the face of it now because I volunteered, was low-key voluntold, but, but, gladly do it. Why? Because it's something I have to do it. It's something that, it's something that I needed to do and I had to convince myself I wanted to do it. Now, I have to do it. That's it, man. <laughs> That's it. How else do you recruit if not on an emotional, on a human level? on a spiritual level like this shit has got to be a calling and not everybody's cut out to be a corporate cowboy some folks just won't cope they can't cope 
when you pull the wool from over their eyes, when you let them see and reveal to them what corporate really looks like and how it operates in day-to-day life, motherfuckers break down, yo. Motherfuckers call in to work. Motherfuckers quit on the spot. Motherfuckers will leave you hanging. Motherfuckers will dime you out. They'll point their fucking fingers at you and say, that's the bad guy. (laughs) <laughs> on some on some fucking Scarface shit, bro. They'll point their fucking fingers at you just so they don't feel any of the heat. Because it got a little hot for them. That's it. Because it got a little hot for them. They got a little uncomfortable. Sweat started to beat up on their face. Or sweat started to beat up and trickle down their back. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And they'll roll you under the bus themselves. They'll get, they'll, they'll hop up into the fucking bus and drive that bitch themselves. <laughs> Thinking they're doing something. Thinking they're doing something. Nah, man. That ain't, that ain't cash money. That ain't pee, bro. That ain't, that ain't corporate cowboy shit, bro. Nah. If you want to donate, by all means, donate. There's some links out there somewhere. A fucking paypal.me slash corporate cowboys. There's a cash app. There's a Venmo. To keep this operation on for profit. It'll be going towards business expenses and legal fees. The usual. Because that, in essence, is what life... How life operates. What life runs on the corporate life. It's what the world runs on. It runs on money and blood and a combination of the two. (laughs) It runs on fucking blood of money. And everything is priced out. Everything has a cost. Have yourselves a great weekend. I'll catch you on the flip side.